It's May. My God, it's absolutely wonderful. The sun's shining and we're sitting here in glorious Dorberton. The doors open. It actually feels like spring has sprung at long last. And we've just got through the last bank holiday. So we're all a bit droopy-eyed, basically knackered, <laughs> after, uh, after what has been an incredibly busy uh, long weekend here in Exmoor. And today... We're in Dorverton, and uh, and I'm going to keep on saying Dorverton so many times because you know frequent visitors to the podcast will hear me saying Dunster all the time. But no, we're in Dorverton, and we're with um, Ali. Hello, Ali, who's the marketing guru for the Dorverton partnership or visit Dorverton.com. Indeed. Hello, Hello. nice to, nice to see you, and of course we're here with Christine as well, who's part of the Dorverton partnership group. And uh, the local owner of the post office. Yeah. Good morning. Good morning. And it's so nice to actually meet you both in person because for the last, what, two and a half years or so, we've been staring at each other through the camera on Zoom and uh, <laughs> doing various things for uh, Exmoor's recovery through the lens. I think, actually, Ali, I've met you before quite a long time ago, maybe in a past life when you were working for an estate agent in the town, maybe? Uh, yes. I, was, I worked with the estate agent in Dalton here for two years. Yeah. Yes, which uh, was great fun, getting to know the community and, and people. That might be where I recognise your face from, not yes. just sort of two inches square on the Zoom. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. You know, it suddenly comes to me that it could have been actually through uh, an aborted purchase of Poacher's Pocket, which was... Uh, oh, yes, yeah. a, little, a little cottage along... That's the... it. What a lovely name. Yeah. Oh, it's Pocket. adorable. Right by the weir in Dulberton, just and you have to go past Poacher's Pocket and you get to the, the bakery, don't you? That's and right, yeah, which was a great attraction. Yeah, I've yeah. been for you. Yeah, yeah so I think that's where it was, because yeah. we were living in Portugal at the time, and I... I Sure, I recognise you from that. It suddenly came to me as yeah, I was uh, sitting here. It's strange, isn't it? Small Thanks. world. And of course, as listeners would have heard, Lucy's here as Hello. well. Her dorset tones. Hello. Hello, Lucy. Hello. So, we'll crack on because I know we're a little short of time today. So, I, I suppose, what has brought us here today, Lucy? I mean, there's obviously my love of Dalton. Mm. Um, I sort of introduced you to Dalton. You a did, bit, actually, didn't I? yes. Because I hadn't ventured this far out, I'm ashamed to say, ladies. From from Dunster and Whitehead. I've never been this way. I always go, would always go up the other way. Because once I started coming with David and walking around the town, which is so pretty, the houses are really interesting, you know, I love history. So I'm always looking at the buildings and trying to figure out what things were. And then the shops are great. The food offering here is really good. (laughs) You know, it's got nice independent stores, hasn't it? So there's interest. And, of course, David's got his favourite bookshop in the whole world is Mm. here. Yes. Um, And my partner loves books. So, um, you know, it just became a great place to come. So sometimes we'll just say, do you know what, let's just do a quick trip to Dolverton. And actually you can get here quickly. Yeah. Countryside's beautiful and it's near the Pony Centre. Mm. Um, So, yeah, it's a great place. And we've been starting, you know, to recommend it to our guests. And that's one of the reasons we wanted you two to tell us more about the delights of Dolverton than Mm. we know. Because David gets here and goes all misty-eyed about, oh, I was going to live here. Mm. (laughs) And then tells me about the upstream bit of the river and the downstream and where it all merges. And I'm thinking, good grief, you know a lot about the job thing. Yeah, I I, I just love it. You know, for me, you know, and we're going to talk about community later on, but... There is something a bit like a sort of a warm snuggle blanket in Dalton mm. in some ways that you feel that you've reached here. You've, you've made a bit of an effort to get here, let's face it, from whichever direction you're coming from. And it feels when you get here, there is that warm fuzziness I get it about. It also the has a proper centre, doesn't it? Yes. Because yes. you've got the town, the square, haven't you? The yes. sort of old fashioned square. That, and I like that. I like that thing. You come in and you think, it feels very English, very traditional English. Mm. And people are very friendly. Yes. Mm. And you also see quite a lot of different sorts of people. I often see farmers. I see horsey people. I see, you know, tourists. You mm. see, and, and locals, you see mm. all. And mm. you don't always see that in places like Minehead. No. So, yes, there's, it's all here and it's all quite condensed and close together. It's yeah. in the valley, in the River Bar Valley, yeah. mm. with the amazing sort of hanging 
what do they call it, a hanging woodland or something? Yeah. Like the woods sort of so close to you. And if you walk just down um, towards the bookshop and you see the rhododendrons and the azaleas, mm. don't you, up in that great Ooh. big garden? Yeah. It's yeah. really lovely. Mm. It is beautiful. You can and hear the birds. Today, yeah, the birds are there. And there's something di- distinctly atmospheric about it when the yeah. mist's sort of hanging up on mm. those trees. Absolutely incredible. But anyway, look, you know, I, I think many of our listeners over the last 50 odd episodes will have heard Lee Wax lyrical about uh, Dalverton and uh, my famous trips to Rothwell and Dunworth, the book, the Shop. bookstore, which yes. seems to sort of take up most of my day, followed by a trip to St. Margaret's Hospice Charity <laughs> Shop, which I know Lucy's bought many a teapot. I have. Um, teapots in there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and of course, various sandwiches at the Tantavi as well. But look, that's enough from us. Um, Ali, uh, Christine, it's over to you really. So... Tell us a little bit about the town, Ali. Tell us, what brought you here? Oh, gosh. Well, I, I've, I've always been a lover of Exmoor. And when I very first came um, to Exmoor, actually towing, towing a horse in a trailer, and, um, and we came over the bridge, by, over the River Barl, right by the bridge inn, and, um, and my husband was looking for a pharmacy. And there was a pharmacy. Yeah, mm. beautiful old pharmacy mm. with stained glass, mm. and lovely stained glass, right um, in the in the middle of the road. And I literally thought I just, just sort of walked into a sort of fairy tale, mm. you know, something out of sort of Disney. Mm. Um, it's such a pretty town, and everyone was so friendly. And the pharmacy was about to shut, but he stayed open and said, "You know, what do you mean?" And you know, um, and then I said, oh, "One day, I, one day I'm going to have to live here, <laughs> like you." Mm-hmm. <laughs> but we actually did. Mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Many years later, and and that sense of community, and, and really, it's not a museum in any way. Mm. It's a very active, very happening town um, with lots going on. But it's um, it's got that amazing sense of community that I don't think I've met anywhere else and found anywhere. Mm. But. Um, there is lots going on, as I say. Um, you know, th- through the summer we have uh, the um, monthly farmers market, which is a proper market of locals. Um, the, the sort of producers all sourced by Christine, and takes place right here in the heart of the town on the last Saturday of the month, April to September, mm-hmm. 10, ten till two thirty. Get the plug in, and that sounds amazing. Did you say there's? There's, it's always really busy. There's always lots of producers, and you make sure they're not duplicated, so they're not all selling the same thing. Yeah, they're all from Exmoor, ish. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so it's one so of right on the Devon border. Here. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's it's they're in. The none of them come from very far away because. You know, why do you, we don't need anyone to come from far away. You know. So that sounds like something our guests should definitely mm. try. Oh, yeah. Live, live music, food, yeah. you know, there's tables drinks. and chairs, drinks. Sounds mm. fab. Crafts, mm. yeah. Yeah. cider, yeah. beer. You've had a taste of <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, is is the basket weaver still yes, there? Yeah, Paul. Yeah, a Paul. Yeah, I mean, he, uh, yeah. Uh, amazing yeah. baskets because he's the guy that we were talking That's to about right. getting a a basket weaving workshop mm-hmm. done for uh, cottage mm. guests mm. or whatever a wee while ago. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I I'm just really enamoured with Paul, and he's so still that's there. Is he? Uh, to do list. Yeah, yeah definitely. definitely. Yes. Yes. So um, that's monthly. Yeah, mo- monthly at the farmers market, and and Christine. So so your role here very much as a shop owner, you know, the post office yeah. owner, so heart of the community. Hopefully. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, let's hope so. It, it doesn't sound like a, an Exmoor accent either from yourself. <laughs> <laughs> so what brought you to these parts? Well, um, we've been here 19 years now, amazingly, um, and time seems to have flown by. We had, really, we were in, in South, South London, South, in Surrey, and um, we're looking for a, a change of, of way of life, mm. really. I, I was working in a job centre, quite challenging <laughs> and um, my husband was a pensions chap um, and we just decided that actually we didn't want to work for other people anymore mm. and because of our background is with banking mm. both of us so we decided you know well let's see what we can do so we looked everywhere from Norfolk right down into the tip of Cornwall for what we thought we might like to do and in the end, although we'd visited this area on holiday, we'd never thought that this 
post office would come up for sale mm. because in those days they didn't really yeah. um, especially in a location like this in the centre of the town and and didn't open until midnight and you know and we were trying to look for a better balance of yeah. life so um, yeah we suddenly we were, were in I don't know I think and we were in um, in Dorset and it suddenly popped up that it was on our emails it was coming up to sell so we literally drove came down with our son um, and you know had a look around the town we'd only literally passed through it really before mm -hmm. maybe had coffee but not you know so we stayed for a couple of days and went and had a look at the school and in those days we both did a lot of sports so it needed to have sports facilities mm -hmm. there's a cricket pitch um, my husband plays cricket um, so that definitely had to have a cricket pitch mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, yeah so we had a look at the look at that and they were very welcoming to him um, and he played for years he mm. stopped now but um, it's old age catching up uh, right. um, well I think old knees actually <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, um, and then and yes yeah, so we were lucky enough to get it um, we've been here ever since that's Brilliant. why we're here and so you so you saw lots of parts of the UK searching for the yeah. if you like the Dorverton ideal yeah. which mm -hmm. came true in the end uh, I won't dwell on that um, <laughs> I, I, so you so you did a lot of searching you know fast forward almost 20 years to yeah. now mm -hmm. why do you think people should make the journey to Dalverton from when they're staying maybe in Minehead and Dunster and those are the northern Exmoor villages the, the thing I can say for me is when I come I've been somewhere and I come back I always come back in I think oh it's such a lovely looking town Mm. And then I go around, the, you know, whichever entrance I come in, I go around the corner. I think, oh, and now I've got all these lovely shots, you know. And 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 it, and then I get out of the car, and then people start saying, oh, morning, you know. Mm. And I just think, oh, that's you know Home. where I want to be. Yeah, mm. yeah. I mean, and I tried doing the morning when I went to the Olympics in mm. 2012. Oh right, yeah. I went with my family, and I said, right, I'm going to say good morning to some people, and they went, no, don't. And I said, no, I <laughs> And they were like. They were walking 10 yards behind me, so I walked along up to the Wembley, actually. I was like, morning! Yeah. <laughs> and the first couple of people looked at me as if I was weird. Yeah. And then, actually, people started to say morning back. Mm. And I just think we've forgotten. In, mm. in general, yes. life's so busy, you're doing this, you're doing that, head down, I've got to get from A to B, mm. and you don't really have time. And that's what I like about Dalton. People have time for people. Yeah, yeah. 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 Really. And that leads back to that yes. thing about it being a bit of a comfort blanket. Yeah. It feels yeah. that people yeah. have a different pace of life. And actually that community spirit whether or not it's the business people here or the community itself mm. there just seems to be something there and and that alley is what's being played out in the summer isn't it here because you have lots of community sort of focused events yes. obviously this year we've got the jubilee and there's quite a few things happening locally isn't there most definitely i mean under the, the sort of visit dalberton umbrella we we decided that we needed to sort of create lots of new events to bring people into Dalverton because, um, you know, you, the, the community, much as it's lovely and everything, we can't survive just by ourselves. Mm. We do need people to come into the town and, um, and so on. So we wanted to get events that would draw people in, um, the Queen's Platinum Jubilee being a wonderful thing to do. And, and the um, and its committee was set up with Christine and, and friends to um, organise two events over the Jubilee weekend and the first one is like a sort of community picnic where um, I think old people over 75 and children and people who worked to support the community through Covid, they all are getting a free cream tea and, oh, and there's going to be music and entertainment <laughs> and then people under 75 <laughs> yeah. are welcome to you know bring our chairs and our picnic blankets and join in and join the music and everything and um so sort of thanking those people and just you know all being together mm. and and everyone's invited to that you know if somebody from Dunster wanted to come down and bring a picnic blanket mm. and you know and, and um, have a roaster 
I don't know, is the barbecue is actually open so you can bring yep. your own burger? No, no, there, oh, there is a barbecue. You can oh, really? run in the barbecue. Oh, that, that's me. Yeah, yeah, Lucy's yeah, got the yeah. beer, I've got the I'll barbecue. The yeah. Yeah. I've got some there is a bar as well, so if, yeah. if people, you know, they just want to turn up with a blanket yes. and eat and drink as well. But it's there. lovely that people can have a free cream tea and you're recognising them and the community mm. is supporting that. Yeah. I think, and that that's the sort of thing that makes us feel, oh, Dalton is just an amazing place. Mm. And, our guests will come here, get out of the car and feel it's easy. People mm. will say hello to you and they could even come to the Jubilee mm. event. Yeah. And, and then there's another through. event on the Sunday the 5th, which we're calling Music on the Lawns, which, um, and you actually can get tickets for it because there are only 200 seats. But again, it's, it's tickets that aren't, they don't the cost you anything. Right. Mm. It's just that's your bottom on a chair or something. <laughs> um, <laughs> and um, and that's that's yeah free of charge and some amazing bands and, and well more importantly the local uh, Exmoor f- f- flautists flutists yeah <laughs> so, uh, so yeah so we've got um, three musicians from young musicians of the year winners from the Two Moors Festival playing um, and they're um, followed by and with supported with um, Blooming Flutes so it's a flute band. I think there's eight of them in the band uh-huh. in the group so and they play it's beautiful mm. music um and so they're sort of doing a couple of sets and and then we've got take note community choir as well that that day plus we've got you know there's obviously a cake tent and drink and contain yourself yeah and, uh, <laughs> take tent. even better nicola from Exmoor distillery oh, so we've yes. got our own distillery you have mm. to, so um, she's coming with her gin bar mm-hmm. um, because we thought gin and classical music don't sound quite nice. Lucy, stop, stop. <laughs> so, so I'm actually not cake, coming back. Cake and gin, cake and gin. Yeah. 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 You should have moved here. We, yeah. we so, had our hand sanitizer from the x oh, yeah. 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 And we used to joke about it after a really tough Bring change over. Yeah. 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 Going. That's right, a slice think, of lemon. I think you were missing the uh, essential uh, <laughs> ingredients. <laughs> yeah, I mean, actually, you can go on a tour there. Yeah. Yes. If, you know, you yeah. can arrange to go down to yeah. the distillery. Mm-hmm. It's only literally two minutes outside of Dalton and see Nicola or, or John, and then they'll, t- you know, tell you all about the distillery. So that's, that's you know, a nice treat, mm. really, and it's so lovely. Mm. Um, and they're, they're, you know, they they live here they work here it's, mm. it's fabulous and their business is expanding so it's more jobs for local people mm. so that's great I think it's brilliant and they do rum as well they there. they've yeah. got yeah. lots of, yeah. 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 they've got uh, absolutely amazing so these events that are being held in the mm-hmm. town are they on the is it called the Exmoor Lawns Exmoor Lawns mm-hmm. Um, which is the area of lawn that's that's down bes- right beside the River Barl, sort of between the river and the bridge in by the bridge, the lovely medieval bridge, isn't it? Sort of an iconic mm. bridge. Um, and um, right in front of the, uh, the it used to be a, a workhouse, didn't it? Yeah. The the, uh, the building that's now the home for the um, Exmoor National Park. So, um, and it's not huge; it's a sort of triangularly shaped, but. Um, yeah, we're, we're making making that a sort of happening place to be because the the next event after the jubilee is um, the first um, artisan food, drink, and crafts festival for mm. Darlington. So, and that's really is again organised by um, Christine. Oh, that's really. Um, <laughs> do, you, do you do anything, else, Christine? <laughs> she does actually own the post office. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I must admit, my husband does say to me sometimes, are you actually going to do any yeah. work? <laughs> Not today. I'm yeah. busy doing yeah. I've actually just got to tell from the microphone that we're sitting in Christine's lovely home and it's spotless. So God <laughs> knows how you managed to, to keep it spotless and run the post office and do all of these things as well. Sorry, uh, we interrupted you. So, no, no, so, no. It, so artisan... Cra- oh, so it's, it, it's um, artisan food, drink and crafts and Amazing. everyone... All the artisans that are coming are all Exmoor based, yeah. so um, that will be an incredibly special event. And um, yeah, so they'll all be down there on the um, on the Exmoor lawns on Saturday, the 9th of July. Yeah, fantastic. So, yeah, we've got a couple of pictures spaces left. So yeah. if there's any you know mm-hmm. unusual you know people out there, mm-hmm. contact me through um, well visit Dalton. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That would be fine. 
Brilliant. Um, you know, and then we could have a chat. It'd be lovely. Yeah. Lord and Mary. I mean, that's incredible because actually if people wanted to come to these events, then there's plenty of parking in Dalton. I've never had a problem uh, parking here. There's the main car parks and, uh, you know, there's plenty of space there. And of course, just look out for the Lorna Dune statue as yes. well, you know, near yes. the old workhouse. And once you've found that, then you'll know yes. where we're talking yes. about. Yes. Oh, that's right. Absolutely. Oh, and talking of Lorna Dune, mm. the, the sort of literary um very oh, good segue. Segue. Yeah. 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 Um, and the inaugural inaugural I'm, I'm losing my <laughs> teeth the uh, inaugural dulverton exmoor literary festival which is going to be held um actually not on the lawns because it's going to be in, in the the sunday the 20th of november so it'll be in our wonderful sort of iconic town hall oh. with, the, with the steps that go mm. up um so we've um, got some amazing speakers coming, and that's going to be held over a whole day. Um, one of them being um, Norman Scott, who has a great links to Exmoor. I don't know if uh, you're, not, yeah, you're probably Scott. not old enough to remember um, Jeremy Thorpe, the politician. Yes, yes, yes of course. And Norman Scott was his friend, him. and that, yes. that, uh, that, that film. So yeah. Norman Scott himself is... Um, is coming. He's recently written um, an autobiography or a memoir called An Accidental Icon and he's going to come and talk and be interviewed actually by a, a local journalist who's also written a book um, called Jeremy Thorpe, A Dazzlingly Talented Man, uh, which is quite a title mm-hmm. for a book. So, so, so um, and he's called Philip Dalling. So the two of them are going to be well done. one of the talks at the show because of course you know, um, uh, uh, Jeremy was the member of Parliament for North Devon. The, uh, which constituency? Uh, was, he was, was uh, Barnstable. 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 Because mm. he was, he went so in Minehead Police Station, didn't he? Well, and the big drama was the the attempted murder mm. of assassination Paul Lock. of Paul yeah. Lock. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yes. Mm. And You've done so, well to get them. Yeah. So that's, that's the Greek. Yeah. Yeah. What was the date of that? Sorry. Um, Sunday, the twentieth of November. Um, right. I'm just scribbling that down for me, actually. That yeah. sounds fascinating. Yeah. But uh, mm. thank you. And there's, yes, got um, a, a, six talks, definitely, including um, uh, William Sitwell, who's um, who's a local he's a master chef judge and um, and so on, and uh, and has a very foodie person. And um, Andrew Cotter. Um, I know anyone who's got a Labrador will love Andrew Cotter because although he's a BBC. Um, commentator, sports commentator. Mm-hmm. He spent um, lockdown commentating on his two Labradors, <laughs> Olive and Mabel, um, uh, doing it mostly on Twitter, and it was incredibly funny. And on the back of that, he's got an enormous following. So, so he's coming too. So. Great. Yeah. Yeah. Well, have you organised all these people yourself? Yes. Yes. In fact, a lot of emails you've been sending. Not emails, lots of chatting. Mm. <laughs> Well done, that's the amazing. tickets for that aren't available yet, but they will be. Mm. We'll be posting out, and it'll be um, book through book when. Right, okay. Um, yes. But it, there'll be links, links through Visit links Dalton. From the visit. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we'll definitely talk about the, the Visit Dalton website in a moment. I've got to ask about um, one of my favourite times of year to come to... Um, uh, to Dalverton is early December and oh, Starlight. 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 Yeah, it's Starlight. The first Sunday of December. Yeah, it's, it's the year. first Sunday. Yeah, and yeah. and yeah. do you think, uh, I, I, I don't want to betray any confidences if it is confidence, but are there fireworks this year? I was at the meeting um, last week and I can confirm that the current plan is fireworks will be on. Oh, yay! <laughs> <laughs> And it is a great evening, isn't it? I mean, I love Starlight anyway, but that evening, you know, you talk mm. about the the atmosphere mm. here is just so incredibly festive. Yeah. It's, yeah. It doesn't feel over-commercialised. It no. just feels like a great place to, you know, bring the family or just mm. come with friends and yeah. just enjoy mm. it. And I think we should touch on um, something that you said earlier about there isn't enough people in Dalton. You're not... A, a, you know, an economy that is self-supporting as a mm. town, and we were saying how the tourist pound is so important to towns mm. like Dolverton, like it is in Dunster and mm. Minehead and all these places. And I think it's worth just reminding our guests that when they spend money here, 
Absolutely. It is going to either support the town or to an independent producer Trish. who's probably made yeah. the item yeah. or has been responsible for its creation or is mm-hmm. cooking it in yeah. front of you. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's so important. Yeah. That that pound goes much further, really, mm-hmm. when spent in local shops and mm-hmm. yes. and, mm-hmm. and in you know, for the farmers market, the artisan festival, Starlight, the stalls there, they're all local. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, mm-hmm. so it's so important the shops, you know, need the, those pounds really. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And, you know, if, if I were a new visitor to Dalverton, so, you know, I've just landed from Planet Zarkon or the Moon or otherwise known as Minehead, and I, <laughs> and I arrive here uh, today, what are three things that you would do? Where would you take me, Ellie? I'd probably start with a drink. Um, <laughs> you know, Planet Zarkon isn't that bad. You know, we're not all alcoholics there. You know? yeah, I definitely have um, a drink and something to eat. Um, possibly in, um, I mean, we've got some amazing tea rooms and coffee houses and pubs. Um, my favourite is Woods, mm-hmm. yeah. which is known the globe over almost. Yeah, yeah. Um, and Planet Zarkon. Yeah. Yeah. That's why he came here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and um, Paddy and Sally, who organise it, and they they win the witch wine pub of I think it's that um, of the year, and have done for oh gosh twenty years or yeah. something. Yeah, been open. The space is just unbelievable, and it's friendly, and it's it's an amazing place. You've got the sort of just one end proper community pub, and you know, and you've got somebody else who's. Jack Russell sitting mm. on your feet and, and the fire, fire is going yeah. and you know and there's a barrel to lean up against and and then at the other end you've got unbelievable fine dining mm. um, from the head chef Ed and and the team and it's yeah it's it's an incredible place mm. absolutely incredible place and local you know all the people in the local community are you know employed employed there oh, not all the people that's the wrong way around. Um, they employ people from the local mm. community. Um, my daughter was a member of staff there for 18 months and loved every shift. Mm. Um, yeah, no, absolutely wonderful place. I mm. think that's the first thing I do. Mm. <laughs> <Yeah>. and, and, <laughs> and apart from going to the post office to buy one of your mugs or something, what I would you do? I suppose if it's a nice day and you've got children, I'd take them down to the bar and let them have a paddle in the river yeah. by the bridge yeah. because the kids love that. Um, and it's it's you know it's so shallow there at that time you know in the, the summer so you, the kids get in there and have a splash around yeah. Yeah. So that's a lovely that's thing lovely. to do mm. gorgeous walk from yeah. the bridge um, up over the hill and um, you go into Burridge Woods which is this the wonderful sort of hanging woodland on the other side of the river go all the way down to Marsh Bridge which is this really pretty I think it's probably Victorian sort of white painted um, metal bridge, bridge. Mm. Iron, iron bridge or I think that's a good time and then and then sort of back along coming sort of right up, up I mean you can actually have a if you've got some real energy go right up over the hill onto Court Down which mm. is an amazing spot where you can see um, Dunkery Beacon from mm. one, on a clear day and, and actually the other way you can see all the way to Dartmoor mm. um, and then you know drop back down the bridle path um, to come out at the back of the church mm. yeah, and that is the route that we use for our fun run so in, in, ah. in September we have a trail well last year was the first year we had a trail fun run mm-hmm. and um, and can you cross and can so you cross can so you can run, run with your mm-hmm. dog if you want. Yeah. yeah oh brilliant yeah, yeah. So, and it goes along by the, rib, by the river bar marsh bridge up mm. what they've now decided is called the demon devil hill because they go up <laughs> yes what they've got the Delverton Demon. The, yeah. Yeah. The, guy who, the guy who did the, the plan of the ra- of the, the track, the race, the race director is from Tibetan Harriers and um, <laughs> that's what he named it and yeah. he runs a lot. <laughs> yeah. And even he thought it was really yeah. Did anyone run that? Yes. Yeah. Again, I, again, I know someone who would do that with the yeah. dog. Mm. Yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah. There's a 2K route, which is really just for children, and then there's a 5K and a 10K yeah. route. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And, um, yeah, and it, again, starts and finishes on, on the lawns. small lawns. Mm-hmm. Um, drinks and teas and, and cake. cake. And is that on the website? That's on the website. Okay. That's on Excellent. Is it Sunday the 18th of September. Visit okay. Um 
And if you do so, does that, do, did do a walk that Ali mentioned up through Burridge and down through Marsh Ridge, of course, if you don't want to do the long road, mm-hmm. you can come back down North Moor Road and if it's not on a Sunday, the cake shop would be open. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And they, especially if it's a Friday, they have donut Fridays <gasps> and they make all their own donuts. No. Oh, my Lord. You oh, know, yeah. You've just got to see them. Mm-hmm. And another reason why... To come out on a Friday. Yeah. And yeah. Fabulous pie. She's oh, very, they're very talented. Yeah. yeah. Donut it, Friday. Donut I, I remember when they they used to be um, uh, on the high street, haven't they? Yes. They, yes. Yeah. In the, yeah. 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 And uh, it's just incredible. Yeah. Just absolutely incredible cakes. Yeah. And um, maybe we'll go back that way. Yes. Today. Exclusive catering, they're called. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. We'll look out for exclusive catering. Yeah. You miss them. They're down there on the right hand side from this way. But yeah, they make, you know, so that's a, an added advantage of doing that walk. <laughs> you can think, oh, well, I can have a cake when I get. Yeah. And I think that's very fair. Yeah. And, and I agree with you. Splashing around in the river, I, I, made, I must admit, I used to. Uh, Come here and walk, walk my uh, cream tea off, and go to Brushford. So just along the yeah. bar there, uh, heading towards the old railway station that used yes. to head up from Exeter yes. there in the uh, in the dim and dark history. And uh, and there are spots along the bar there where the bankers just washed walk, away, yeah, and you can go in. and have yeah. a little dip in the river. And yeah. uh, there's nothing like a bit of wild swimming yeah. and, yes. and dipping. Yes. And yes. you just be careful. And don't get the donuts wet. Yeah, that's so, right. Yeah. <laughs> and you mentioned the railway, the mm. old railway. Of course, we do have a heritage centre in oh, right. yeah. So that is in um, the back of the Guildhall. Mm-hmm. So basically, you look at the Guildhall car park and you'll find the heritage centre. But they, they've they got a model railway of that part of the of the, the station that was built. And mm. it's, it's all... Oh. Exactly as it used to be, we've mm. modelled it completely on the old railway station that used to be in Brushford. Mm. So that's that's a fantastic you know thing to see. And then they've got like the old there's like a place in there called Granny's Cottage. Mm-hmm. So originally I think it was three cottages, and they kept one of the rooms as a room would have been. And there were, I think it was eight people living in this. Mm-hmm. And you can see, you know, how tiny it was, yeah. and it's kitted out in, in the, you know, as it would have been in the, the sort of Victorian time. Mm. So, yeah, and they've got lots of. Also, if you've got time, they've got a, a recordings from people who've lived here in the past, and you know, looking back on what they remember of, the, mm. of things going on, and that's mm. fascinating to listen to those stories. Mm. You can you know, like listen into those in their listening room. So. That's quite good. It's yeah. brilliant. I mean, because we shouldn't forget, and this comes back to what, what we were saying earlier on, that this is predominantly a rural community mm-hmm. in the heart of the National Park, mm-hmm. um, surrounded by hills. You know, this isn't a commuter town. No, it's no, it's no. It, it, This is a rural community that, uh, as Lucy said, every penny that's spent here goes back into the mm-hmm. pockets of the community and does have echoes of community of the past, doesn't it? And of course, whilst the railway ran for a relatively short period of time Mm -hmm. to Brushford to bring tourism in from Exeter and and the main lines, actually it didn't last too long. This has always been a community thriving in its own right, rather than... It's one of those places that had the beaching chop. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. In the 60s, so unfortunately. Although they're doing some research at the moment that... Um, they found some plans of a really, really um, old railway coming the other way. Oh, really? Uh, it never got built or anything, but they're doing some research and hoping to get some funding because if they can, they're going to try and, if they can get the funding, they're going to build a, a, a model of that as mm-hmm. well, of what it, what it would have been, you know. Yeah. Um, so that will be very interesting for them. They're working on that at the moment, I know. Well, that, I mean, that sounds amazing. Of course, you've got the Exmoor National Park Visitor Centre here, the yeah. library yeah. And, uh, and the Heritage Centre as well. I suppose we, we have to talk about where people find this information on the website. The website. Um, which I have to say, from a, you know, someone who designs and works with a lot of web designers and branding agents and the like, I'm a huge fan, as Christine will know, of the of the branding in particular. I think, it, you know, it is is world class, and I hate using that term, but it is truly world class. And where did all that start then? How how did all the website and the branding? How who started that project off? Well, well <laughs> I mean, initially, we had 
thoughts at our partnership group that we do did need to come together and have when we were doing things and posting out about things that it was obviously recognisable that it was Dalton mm. that we were talking about and that people would see it and go oh actually that's Dalton's mm. um, and so that was phase one phase two was oh well now we need someone who can pull that together mm. that's where Ali came in <laughs> <laughs> Oh, thank you. And um, the partnership group had appointed um, a lovely man called Tim as, as the graphic designer. And, um, and he, uh, he basically came up with lots of ideas. And, and I was like, mm -hmm, oh, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Um, and eventually we, I had to present to the partnership group and, and try out with some other traders and, you know, to see what people thought. And... Dulverton, uh, uh, so it's basically, for those who don't know, the branding is a, is a letter D, um, and within the letter D, and the letter D is made up of all the colours of Exmoor, and there are lots of colours of Exmoor, many different greens, there's purple heathers, there's all sorts of colours, I mean it, it's an incredible place. Um, and in the, to sort of form the mid cut out of the D, as you could imagine it, is um, is a sort of artist's impression of a of a stag's head because lots of towns begin with the letter D and they've danced it up, but you know <laughs> Dagenham and goodness mm. knows where else. But you know they don't have red, uh, no. red mm. stags. No. And um, and although the stag within the heart of Del the, the, the in the branding is probably not really a red deer stag, you know it's a stag. Mm. And, and that really, when we tried all sorts of, what's Dalberton special for? Well, the bridge, as I've said, is, is unique. Um, even the town hall steps are mm. quite, uh, I mean, uh, you know, if you take one picture of them, everyone knows where they are. Yes. But it's very difficult to incorporate that into some form of, of branding. And we tried and we tried and we tried, but, but when the stag came up with these Exmoor colours, we thought, yeah, there we are. And mm. Dalberton, gateway to Exmoor, Yes, there are other gateways to Exmoor, but this is the southern gateway, but mm. we, we just missed southern off that, because there's too many words. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, uh, so, and from that, we then um, built up the social media. Um, so do please follow us on um, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Um, and, and then it was not originally part of the brief but as it sort of evolved and, 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 and sort of snowballed we realised that if people were enjoying the social media they need to go somewhere to find out more about the events so that's when we, uh, we built the website as well mm -hmm. so, uh, and there's yeah, lots of stuff on there mm -hmm. where to eat, where to drink and, and links and where to, where to stay where to, if you want to be here and, and so on and, and obviously the events calendar and details of the events and then links to the tickets and, and so on. So, mm. yeah. And it's important, isn't it, that towns are branded like this. You know, we were saying earlier, weren't we didn't used to have to do these sorts of things. Mm. And now we do. Yes. But now you need a website, you need an events page, you need events, you need activities to bring people in because we want tourists to find yes. us, we want visitors to come out make the drive, make the journey over yes. and spend money when they're here. Yeah. Definitely. Experience I mean, it and spend the, the cash. Yes. I mean, another event that we haven't mentioned that's, that's in September, Sunday the 4th, is, is the Vintage Fair, which happened last year as well and, and this year. And we've, um, lot, we bring in a lot of people from, mm. from locally, obviously stallholders selling vintage items and... Um, and um, and then you've got the, the Southwest Lindy Hoppers group, so a whole group of Lindy Hoppers and the the Liberty Sisters of singing their Boogie 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 Boy mm -hmm. songs. Yes, yeah, so people would love that, and we'll put that on our website. And that's yeah. such fun. Yes. And the Devon North Devon Classic Car Club, they all come down, oh, and whilst yeah. they're here, they then sort of like sort of think right well, let's just wander up the high street mm. and just see and the butchers is still open and the gift yeah. shops are open yes. um, so and, and the whole town is embracing that even though you know they might not want a Lindy Hop they still you know they still mm. want people to come even though it's a Sunday so that's that's a really really fun day yeah. out so hopefully that will be repeated annually as well yeah I'm but sure people will want to come to that because mm. those sorts of things are really popular aren't they yes yeah 
Definitely. It's, I mean, and that just goes to show that, you know, it's a small town, big heart, lots mm. of stuff going on mm. uh, here. If people want to find out more about the events and more about the history and the like, tell us about the website then. So where, what's the web address? visitdelverton.com okay so I'd recommend you go and have a a mooch around there definitely Mm -hmm. for people that have landed on this podcast who are coming to North Exmoor then it's a really easy journey so hop in the car I'll take the A396 through uh, Dunster and then what about 40 minutes uh, due south is you'll come across Dalverton there's also a bus uh, if you want to uh, brave the, I think it's the 198, We're is all it? making faces at each other. Yeah, no, it's no, it, it, does happen, <laughs> it does happen now and again, um, because I see it whistling through um, Dunster High Street, so there is a bus that way. And also, of course, if you land at uh, Taunton Railway Station, you can take the 25 bus, I think it is, mm-hmm. which comes this way via sort of Water Owen with Velliscombe and the like, and, and yeah, comes yeah. here as well. So there's lots of different ways uh, you can come and visit uh, Dalton and uh, my recommendation as always is to get here early yeah. start off with maybe a nice breakfast in the town and then spend all day here yeah. there's mm. loads to be doing and um, bring your flippers for a dip in the river definitely, yeah. Yeah. definitely. <laughs> well thank you because it's been really fascinating um, you know we do want our guests to come out and come to Dalton particularly people who've stayed with us before and come back this is a new place for them to come Um, and there's so much to do and I'm really hoping we can get some people to some of these events as well so that would be really interesting and it's really impressive to see how you work together and what you've done Um, because David and I have been involved in marketing for Dunster and we know how much work it is we know what's involved the hours that you spend Um, so yeah well done because it it all looks really amazing and the events are incredible yeah we'll definitely be coming to some of those yeah yeah (laughs) definitely and so when's the next farmer's market it's the is it the last last Saturday of May the the last Saturday of May and then ongoing until September yeah each last Saturday yeah Yeah. well I know you'll be uh, certainly coming along and if I can take a Saturday off I'll be here too yeah but you are more likely to be here for Friday the Donut Friday. Yeah, Friday. It, 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 now that you've said that. When, when you come, just tell her, tell her. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Because that's what's sent you. Yeah. <laughs> well, they'll, the hear, back, they'll hear it on the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for your time today. I know you're both incredibly busy. And uh, and good luck this spring and summer in your respective businesses. Thank you. All right. Thank you again. Thank you.